my pouring friends. It's Maggie here. There's been lots of discussion and it's an ongoing discussion. I've spoken about this so many times um, and so I figured I should do a little video on it so that I can refer people to it when it comes to making your homemade pouring medium. So I'm going to make two homemade pouring mediums today and the recipes are as such I've just got them up there I don't know if I need to say them maybe I should I'll go through this one here it's recipe number one three parts flow troll two parts PVA one part global pouring medium and half a part water and for this breaking it down in this recipe one part is 400 mils so I'll be using 120 mils of Floetrol, 80 mils of PVA, because that's two parts, one part global pouring medium, 400 mils, and a half part of water, 200 mils, totaling 260 mils of pouring medium, all getting plonked into this awesome three litre container of milk. Recipe number two doesn't have the global pouring medium and it's not a necessary component, okay? These are just two different recipes and I think that for me what I find the difference between the two recipes is simply that the cells with the global pouring medium have just a little bit more integrity they hold a little bit more plumply and rounder as it dries rather than spreading um, and also the finish on this has that little bit of extra shine versus this one which is still not too flat because it's quite substantial with its PVA um, on PVA there's the controversy of it causing cracking in pouring and I have observed some pores that have had PVA in the pouring medium cracking but I really believe it's down to the external factors rather than the PVA content itself and some of those are the paint being too thick and the weather being too extreme particularly when it's hot and there be the um, paint being thick and it's hot weather and therefore it forms a skin on the outside and causes a crack so anyway let's keep going with this recipe number two which is three parts Floetrol two parts PVA and 0.5 H2O by the way did you hear Jasmine's toy squeak if you listen to my videos you'll hear her squeak at the beginning of every video and it's like she's like a child you know when you're on the phone wanting attention so I put her out there and she's like going oh I can't believe I've been discarded from the backyard oh come on I've got to keep focused on my videos I I go off on a tangent right back to this recipe number two in this recipe one part is 500 mils so that means that for the flow troll we're using 1500 mils flow troll that's three parts 1000 mils PVA two parts and 250 mils which is 0.5 H2O and in total that equals 270 mils and that's recipes written on this container so I know the differences between what one I'll be accessing and what, what one I won't and again it's a three litre container of milk so I will um, post these recipes again at the I'll take a photo of them and pop them at the end of the video um, and that way you can pause it there and write them down now let's get on to making so here it. we are with everything set up I'm dagging around in my pajamas today I'm fortunate enough to have a nice lazy day off well it's not really a lazy day off I've been creating quite a bit here we go oh Jazzy be quiet so I've got my flow troll and the first recipe we're doing is three parts flow troll two parts PVA one part global pouring medium 
or any other pouring medium of your choice. Liquitex seems to be a common one. There's a Montmartre pouring medium, any pouring medium that's on the market. And I'm using my handing measuring cup. Some people like to weigh theirs, but I'm fine just using a measuring cup. I put it all into a bucket. I fold it with this. I don't give it a massive big stir. I just fold it to make sure that the PVA is all broken down through and the water's all through it um, and everything's mixed just nicely. And the reason I don't give it a massive big whizzy fuzz thing is so that I don't get too many air bubbles and I can get on to using it as soon as possible. Okay, so here we go. Beautiful creamy flow troll. Flow, 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 flow. That's 1,000 mils, but I'm wanting 1,200. And scraping that out, because it does, you know, there's probably 50 mils in there on the sides. It's quite thick, remember? Not thick like pancake mix, but you know, it's not at all like water. And that's why I add water in last, so I can swoosh it all around. And now I just need 200 mils of this. Here we go. Two hundred. The reason I put my flow troll in first is because the PVA is a lot thicker and heavier, and if I put that in first, it's harder to scrape around from the bottom of the bucket. So I like to put my flow troll in first, followed by my PVA, which is now. And we're using 800 mils of PVA. I'm hoping there is 800 mils in here. I'm going to have to pause us and go and get the other container. Here we go. Squish, squish. Oh yeah, there definitely is. But I'll have to go and get the other containers for the second recipe. I'll go through this stuff like anything. I'll probably make this lot once a week. More if I'm doing a workshops. Okay, add that in. A bit of a scrape. If I was being frugal, I could use one of the, you know, your cake scraper. But today I don't, I don't feel like I'm being frugal. I'm just going to give that a little bit of a stir in now. Just folding it, folding it, folding it. And it doesn't take much for the PVA to just start merging with the flow troll. And if you're wanting a thicker pouring medium, stop now. Don't add any more of, don't add the water. Keep it as a nice thick pouring medium like this. People like thicker pouring um, mediums for nice round cells they're not necessarily bigger because you can't tilt your painter successfully and I think oh, you really need to just continue experimenting with your pouring mediums as you gain the confidence of pouring it's worth making the mistakes so that you can understand um, what it is like literally in front of you when your medium's too thin or when it's too thick. And now we're up to one part global, 400 mils. And now, finally, the 200 ml of water. Oh, turn this around. Get my 200 ml. And I'll just sort of swoosh this around a little bit here. 
to get the bits off the side. I don't really need to. Probably makes no difference in the whole um, bigger picture. But you know, there you go. So there we have it. All of the ingredients are in the bucket. And now I'm just going to give it a really good stir. Just folding, folding. I don't know if you can see or not. But that's all I'm simply doing. Just folding it. And I might bring you off the tripod when this is all nicely done. And show you the consistency that this pouring medium's at. And it's exactly the same consistency for the next recipe because the global pouring medium is not making a difference for the consistency it's just adding a little bit of extra something to the recipe it's you know, it is an ingredient that does make a difference, but it's a subtle difference. I think it's like, I'm just trying to think of an example in a cake recipe. Maybe where if you make an apple pie, it tastes delicious. You add a little bit of vanilla essence and you still have a delicious apple pie with a tiny bit of vanilla essence. And that's fundamentally what the difference is with using a professional pouring medium in your pouring medium. Another question that gets asked is why do we make our own pouring medium when there are pouring mediums out there to buy? And it's just simply because I think a lot of the enjoyment of the process is about making our own stuff. You know, in Australia, for example, we pay quite a bit for Floetrol. A um, four litre container, which is nearly a gallon, for us is 54 Australian dollars not even US dollars so you know that would probably come close to $65 maybe nearly $70 for four liters American dollars um, but our drive for the for the art is so much so that we make our own pouring medium we don't mind saving up and spending the money on the ingredients we need for the good outcomes. You can of course make a pouring medium without Floetrol. Um, maybe I'll make a, a video on that separately. Get some of my recipes up. This particular recipe, um, three parts Floetrol, two parts PVA, one part pouring medium and half a part water is a variation of Amory Hoffman's pouring medium that I learnt quite a while ago and it's one that I've stuck with consistently and it's quite a common pouring medium because it's very successful. Right, I'm going to pop you off the tripod now. I don't even know if you can see my face. Can you see my face? Um, and bring you in to show you the consistency and look at the consistency I'm lift, gonna lift this up and let you see it drizzle onto back onto itself see how it just leaves a fine ribbon see that and then it sinks in I'll move the see and it's like I don't know how to describe it there's so many words for it you know, it's not like warm honey to me. Okay, let's get you back up on the tripod so that you can see the rest of what I'm doing. It's good, isn't it? Can you, did you see that? See it drizzle over there and hold itself. And then sink away. Okay. And the next part of the video is simply decantering it into its container. This is the part of the video I'm most nervous of because, you know, how embarrassing if, if I um, do a massive spill. I'm not the most...
I'll just stop there because it's going to be boring for you to watch this whole process. It will take one or two minutes for this to get all the way in. Okay, so that's all nicely in the, the first bottle. And let's get on to recipe number two, which we are using 150 mils of Floetrol. So we get our Floetrol again. And, whoops, there I am, I can see it now. One thousand. Did I say one hundred and fifty? I meant one thousand five hundred. Because each part in this recipe constitutes five hundred mils. So that was one thousand. This makes it to one thousand five hundred. Scraping that out. Floetrol is nearly finished. When your Floetrol is empty, it's four liters. So add just a cup of water to it and give it a shake and get all the Floetrol into that water and put it in a separate bottle and use that water to bring your thicker paints up to consistency. And that way you're just helping your paints retain integrity and their pigments won't split and you're using the last bit of the Floetrol that's covered in the bottle. Okay, um, PVA, 1,000 mils, and I have got my other big bottle there, just in case there's not 1,000 mils in here. Oh, worst thing ever, I measured all the ingredients out and realised the camera wasn't on. And I was actually just coming over to turn it off while I did the last bit of the stirring because it's so boring. But this recipe number two that has got all the ingredients in it is the 500 mils of Floetrol. No, not 500, 1,500 mils of Floetrol, 1,000 mils of PVA, and 250 mils of water and its consistency is very very similar it's identical to the other pouring medium what I wanted to talk about was making sure that you give this a really good stir two to three minutes stir because we can't see how it integrates because all the ingredients are, are white and the water being clear you know it just becomes white and as it merges so make sure you give it a really good three to four minute folding and stirring. Um, what else did I want to say? The other thing is, is that I like to leave my pouring medium for 24 hours before I use it because it allows it to merge at that really molecular level. You know, you've got three ingredients that are fundamentally doing a chemical reaction and for them to do their best, they need um, some time to come together at that level that we can't see. Ooh, there's something in there. Got it. Little tag, don't know how it got in there. Um, so make up your big pouring mediums lots so that you've got it sitting there and it will serve you well and give it 24 hours before you use it and it will serve you even better. Um, any questions you have, just pop into the comments. Um, let's get into decantering this. 
remember to give me a thumbs up and a subscribe. I know it might not make a difference to you, but it does to me. Um, well, you probably and should be following quite a few YouTubers to keep your inspiration going and also to inspire your creativity. Um, trying not to get focused on one person's pouring method so that you can learn and absorb as many techniques as possible to come up with your own freestyle or even just to feel like you're not um, comparing yourself to other people too much and feeling free within what you're producing instead of going oh I wish it was more like blah blah blahs um, keep practicing don't be frightened of um, what you think is a, a fail because many other people will like it just because it's not what you had in mind um, start getting on to pouring for gifts and presents so that you don't clutter up your own house and space keep some of your first pours so that you can see how much you're progressing and if you find that you are still just video binging limit yourself to half an hour at a time um, which sometimes can only be the be watching one video and then go and do something to help your creativity get a kick on uh, it's very pleasurable once you get moving uh, but it can be very overwhelming for many people and what I have observed is that the longer you put off your pouring the more overwhelming and fearful it can become there's nothing to be frightened of um, you're creating abstract fluid art there are no mistakes to be made and use your primary colors at the beginning so that you can't muddy up your coloring um, you'll learn more about how colors work together as you progress so your primary colors you can't make a mistake you won't get muddying anyway I hope you enjoyed um, and got something out of this video and yeah, let me know how you're going I really do like making videos for you all because I do this on a daily basis I run a nice happy face book group called ready steady poor Maggie and the moderators and um, we just love sharing the things that we learn and the way that we create and we love inspiring and helping other people and you know it's a massive process it's a never-ending process and really, I really hope you get into it.